The other one my guest today is Alex Bean. He's sitting on a rocket ship with Divi, but 10, 11 years ago, he's selling scooter parts. What happened? We're going to dive in today. Divi modernizes finance for businesses by combining expense management software and smart corporate cards into a single platform. Finance leaders can now get real-time visibility into their company spend and flexible controls that prevent teams from ever going over budget. You can check it out at getdivi.com. Alex, ready to take us to the top? Yeah, scooter I wasn't business. ready for the scooter part, the scooter business reference, but I, well, we can dig into it. Well, it's crazy. I mean, you go. I mean, I, my research team was looking. They're going, wait, this guy went from basically being a GM at a scooter place to running like one of the fastest growing fintech businesses today. How the hell does this happen? Yeah. So, real quick on the scooter business. It, I mean, I actually feel like those are some of my most informative years or formative years. Um, I mean, I was in my mid twenties, uh, knew the owner of the business. He got sick and he said, Hey, I'm sick. Can you come in and run it? Like, can you come in and, 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 and build this thing? And, you know, at the time we were, we thought we were going to like take over the X games and take over skateboarding. So you kind of thought big, but we, we did some fun stuff, learned a lot about manufacturing and, and, and branding and, uh, he got healthy. So that's when we, I gave it back to him and then, and got into tech. So, um, learned a lot, a lot of fun, but definitely different than FinTech for sure. So, so tell the Divi, so if you had Divi when you were running that business, like what sort of credit lines would you have been pulling? What sort of expense management would you have been doing? Like sort of explain the current product as, as like how you would have used it back then. Yeah, but it's funny because you might say like, well, how did you go from selling scooter parts to doing Divi? And, I, and, and to me, I'm actually, it's super natural because, you know, when I'm running uh, Lucky, which was the scooter company, we had 10 riders all over the world traveling for various tournaments, you know, building content. Uh, we would do trade shows. And so I would send seven guys to Vegas on a trade show conference. And we're a small company. We didn't have a, a ton of cash. So spending the budget of 15000 for the conference was like imperative. Like you can't go over. But everyone was using their own card. We were getting expense reports, you know, a month and a half late. So we were going over without knowing we were going over. And Divi would have solved that entirely. We, you know, we could have uh, said, hey, here's your budget. Had cash, check credit, everything inside of that expense reports from all the riders and all the employees would have come uh, directly. So honestly, when we started Divi, my partner, Blake and I, it was just like, well, we've ran multiple businesses and we understand the needs. And so we built it not as tech engineers, but as business owners and saying, we're building something that we would have wanted to use in our prior company. Yeah. And what's, who's the customer target today? Is it the luckies of the world, SMBs? Yeah. Yep, luckies of the world, but just SMBs. You know, we we kind of have two audiences. I say like one to fifty and fifty to five hundred. Slightly different use cases for the most part, but SMBs in general. That that's what we're going after the mom and pops of America, Main Street America, not just the VC backed companies. Yep, and and talk to me about that segment, right? So if an SMB is listening right now and they're going, man, I'm currently using like six tools to do all these things Alex is talking about, and they want to start with you. Like, what's the average price point an SMB is going to pay you guys? Nothing. It's free. Okay. So how do you make money? Yeah. So we basically take Amex, right? Like you're not paying for your Chase card or your Wells Fargo card or whatever. Uh, we take your credit card. That's how we make money. So we make money just like the banks would. And then we uh, give you the software that Expensify and, and others are, 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 are giving you. So we really combine it into one platform. And what we found is by combining it, it's not only just that it's free, it's the like the source of information is so much quicker and so much better. So the things we can do are, are much different. Um, but yeah, it's free. And that's why we're super excited to offer it to the mom and pops of the world, because we can tell them, stop paying for those three softwares and come just use Divi. And it's, you know, it's it's a it's a win-win for both. Yeah, I mean, you have four sort of thing buckets on your website, business credit, spend management, expense management, and AP management. There are multi-billion dollar companies competing in just one of those verticals. Just to be clear, yeah. I want to make sure I'm getting this right. You're giving away spend management, expense management, and AP management free. You're making money on the credit card stuff and the credit fund. Yep, exactly right. Yep. Wow. Okay, interesting. So I guess the question I would have for you is, this is not easy software to build. How did you fund it in the early days so that you could give it away for free? So that's actually a really good question. Had I've had that conversation with a lot of people, a few things. One, we all we raised money early because we knew that we were taking a big swing. I don't think that's for everyone. So I'm not like out there recommending to all entrepreneurs, like go raise VC funds, go raise as much as you can. But for us, as you just said, we're taking on trillion dollar markets in every in all four of those buckets. So we're like, all right, like we've got we've got to bring money to the table and, and go build the team. So for us, that's what we did. Um, and at the beginning, like nowadays in the fintech space, if that's where you're at, there's so many more tools that enable fintechs to go build companies that didn't exist five years ago, which 
that sounds nuts, but you know, there's a lot of, I can get into the nuances, a lot of things that the banks couldn't offer us five years ago that now they're, they're fully built to offer to these fintechs. So I think you're going to see a wave of innovation because of that. So year one, it sounds like was what, like 2016, 2017, is that right? Yeah. And I want to touch on founding story real quick because founder equity is obviously a hot topic with anyone launching a company. Do you guys just say, you know what, we're equal partners 50-50 or was there some nuance there? Uh, nuance, yeah. Okay. And and I, I'm actually, so here, here's, let me give the, every partnership's different, right? So like anything I give here is not going to be definitive for all. So Blake, my partner, uh, my friend and partner, came to me with the concept of Divi, right? And and we formulated it together, but his original idea uh, was his and the name Divi came from him. And frankly, he had uh, the money to, to kind of help kickstart some of this. How so, much did he kickstart it with? Um, I think that's private. Sorry, I don't, I don't know if we've disclosed that. But you know, it was, it was a decent amount of his own money to say, hey, we're going to go design and engineer and, and do some stuff before we went and raised formulae. So... Um, he he had he has more than me, right? Clearly, it was you know he had it. And the advice I would give a non CEO co founder is you have to understand where you where you sit. For me, I always knew Blake was the quarterback and I was the running back. To use a football reference, meaning we were partners. And he, I don't think he could have done it without me, but I know I couldn't have done it without him. And uh, you can still be partners and not be 50-50. Uh, I think I've seen a lot of partnerships where you go in and they are equal partners. One might be the CEO, but the other one, they have the idea together and that's 50-50. Great. I, that would be awesome. Uh, but for us, it was not 50-50, but that doesn't um, take away from the partnership. So nuance there. For sure. First formal round was when and how much? Uh, 10 million from uh, Paleon Partners here in Utah. And I think that was in, was it 18? 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you, raised, you just raised more this year, I think. What was that, yep. right? Yep, brought on Hanako, Will Rock, uh, crew, right? So some great investors. Uh, it was our Series D. And how much did you guys raise there? Uh, One hundred and sixty-five, I think. And do you remember the valuation? One point six. One point six. So full story yeah. there. Don't want to bury right. the. You, like, you just as an entrepreneur, you're like, do you remember the valuation? I'm like, well, let me see here. Yeah, I remember the valuation. Yeah. Maybe I strategically ask it that way to make sure more people answer. Uh, if you phrase it yeah. that way, you definitely get a higher response rate. But I wanted to put that out there because, yeah. again, what you're doing here is very interesting, right? We've had David on from Expensify. We've had Rex on. We've had Ramp on the show, right? And they're doing they're basically building massive business on something that you're doing for free. So I want to dive more into the credit card business. I mean, how much money can you make on the credit card business? There's only, what, 200, 300 bits to spread there? Yeah. Yep. That's correct. But uh, there's a few different ways, right? You see Brex uh, is starting to launch paid software. We have some paid, we have paid software. Um, you know, you make money on the, on the card, uh, or sorry, on the, on the credit side, right? If fees and things of that nature. I mean, it's just like a bank. You, it's basically asking the question like, well, how's Amex making money? And it's like, well, I mean, I think they're making a fair amount of money. So, you know, two, even 200 to 300 bips, you, you start to do the math and you're doing billions of dollars in spend and the revenue starts to add up. It is, what will GMB be, be this year through the platform? I uh, don't think that's disclosed, but, you know, we're, we did, we did, oh man, I don't think that's disclosed. So I'm going to keep can that. You do, can you do a range, Alex? Billions of dollars in spend. Okay, got it. So more more than a billion, less than a hundred billion. Is that a big enough range? Sure. Yeah, that that'll work. Yeah, <laughs> that's a damn big range. But okay, more than a billion, less than ten billion. And then, I guess, can you maybe um, just so I can quickly understand this? So last twelve months, if you guys look at your total revenue, just give me percentages. What percent would you say is credit card versus paid software versus your credit fund returns? Almost, almost all. Uh, I would say majority of that is on interchange. Oh wow! Uh, so really, it's mostly credit card. Interesting. I was thinking you might have said that there's actually a massive balance sheet business here because you have unique insights to data you can underwrite better than anybody else yeah there's definitely elements of that but uh, even if you talk to brex and ramp like you're not you're not making most of your money on that right because again underwriting just minimizes your losses it doesn't actually add you if you're really good at underwriting it doesn't add revenue it minimizes your loss rate well, I mean, so look, I mean, there are cabbage, you know, cabbages of the world, right? That play in this space, right? Which it's it's a it's a purely balance sheet business. You drive your cost to capital yeah. to plus one or two. You have underwriting. You do deals. SMBs at a thirty five percent effective APR. You make a big spread. Yeah. So the difference on that, um, y- I think you'd see the same with Brex and Ramp too. Right now, when we're underwriting, we're not doing a lot of loans. We will be, you know, adding yeah. to that. We kind of have that in beta. It's more underwriting, like your credit card, like an Amex. So if you don't pay. Oh. 
if you don't pay, then there are fees. And obviously there is revenue that comes from like, hey, if you don't pay your credit card bill, you pay it late, we, you know, it's carried interest, et cetera. Um, but Cabbage is doing like loans, right? There, there's just straight out saying, hey, we're going to give you a $100,000 loan and at this return. So, Got it. So just to be clear, you're just doing the credit card stuff. You don't actually, you guys haven't went out and raised a billion dollars as a balance sheet credit fund to do small business loans into your partners. Well, we well, we do have that set up. We are not fully launched on it simply uh, from a product standpoint. We actually launched it pre-COVID. We pulled it obviously with COVID um, and now we're you know going to start launching it again. So I mean, it's definitely in our wheelhouse, right? It's the same conversation Amex and all these guys have. So it's not a uh, Maybe in the way we do it, we feel like we'll have some innovation on it. But the concept of, of those loans is not innovative. So. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about how many of these customers are serving now today. What's the number? Yeah, over 10,000 uh, and adding uh, quite a few uh, every month. So we're super excited about our growth rate. And it just means that, I mean, our motto is spend smarter. So for us, it's about having uh, more and more SMBs, mom and pops, you know, the old lucky scooter size companies. Uh, spend smarter, stay in budget, you know, like hit payroll, uh, save money. I mean, that, that's kind of what we're all about. So for us, seeing that number rise is exciting. Yeah. Your press release is 2019, a thousand customers, 2020, 4,500. It's so more than double in year over year. Now that now breaking 10,000, what do you think you'll finish this year at? How am I adding new like per month? Yeah. I mean, I think we'll cool easily top 20 and, uh, even with some growth pay on that. So we'll see, but, uh, def- we're growing over a hundred percent. So we, we, we expect that to continue. And that's customer count. Are you also growing revenues 100% year over year? Yeah. How long can you keep doing that? I mean, it's hard to do that at big numbers. Not forever. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Can you give us a sense of revenue today? Uh, uh, no. I, again, sorry. I don't want to be coy. I just think that right now it's private. So I'm going to hold on to that. But no, I mean, like we're super excited about it. We hit some some big milestones recently. You can look at our valuation and, and probably derive some element of what it is. So uh, no, but I haven't, I uh, haven't done a series D round recently. Uh, help us understand. Don't talk about your own deal, but in, in most series D rounds, how much of a company is it, is a SaaS founder going to be selling? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're like, actually I'll give you this. So if you're going to go public, uh, now SPACs do make it a little bit different, but I think you see a lot of companies that go public and, and, and we, we would look at it and say, Hey, you gotta be doing like 200 million in revenue, you know, 300 million in revenue to be like to go public, right? That's when you start to be a known name and, and, and really have traction. So for us, uh, you know, in between that 100 to 300 range, like that's where we, you know, we look at that and say, okay, what are your growth rates? When do you hit what milestone? Uh, what do we need to do to accelerate out of this? And, and you know, look at Qualtrics, which was, uh, they just went public here in Utah. They're, they're friends of ours. And, you know, it's like, yeah, y- y- they hit the 200 million, then they hit the 300 million, then they hit the 600 million, and now they're you know, approaching the billion. And it's like, you just have to keep that trajectory of growth. So I can't forecast, you know, I'm not going to announce our forecast of two years from now uh, on, on this podcast, but it's keeping a really healthy growth rate. It might not double forever, clearly, because at some point that will stop. But. Yeah, I mean, do you think, do you guys feel good about your plan to break a $100 million run rate in the next two years? Uh, yes. <laughs> That feel very me. good about that. that me, I, I that, am that very helps me <laughs> That helps me. Yeah, go ahead. Make the statement. No, I'm very confident that we will <laughs> we will achieve that. Yeah. There you go. That helps me with a bunch of things. So you're, it tells me you're not at 100 million yet, right? But the growth plan is obviously clearly takes you over that over that mark. So that's great. Um, talk to me about any other. Is there anything you talk about in terms of product? It sounds like you have a credit fund that's maybe in the works. You'll be more aggressive there. Any other little products you can yeah. give away free? Yeah. So, I mean, AP management, uh, you, you see that as one of the four buckets. Um, w- reason we f- view that as so powerful is just, we want it to be one, sp- one place that you're making all your spending and you're reconciling and you're thinking through like how much are we, you know, uh, what's going out of the company. So it, we're, we've launched that, but it's not where we want it to be in terms of full scope and capability and the innovation we can bring to that side of the fence. So uh, that's, that to me is what we're probably most excited about and coming around the corner. Got it. That makes good sense. And then talk to me a little bit about churn, right? In this space, how, how do you even define churn? Cause if you're not like a traditional SaaS company where they're starting an end date, do you find churn is like they have a credit card and they stop using the credit card? Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, we, so we're very, for, like churn for us is very strong. Um, we have launched budget. Hold on, strong or we, so what's the, what, what are you churning like annually right now? We, we are not churning very much. 
Okay, got it. We're in a very good position when it comes to churn. And the reason is because- By the way, I'd consider very good position like under 5% annually. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's very fair. So, uh, which is crazy on a free product that people can walk away, right? Like, you know, you would assume a lot of people just sign up for free and they they walk away. Well, an SMB. I mean, that's crazy low for SMB. Yep. But but we're, why we're in a really good position uh, is is budgets, right? So if someone gets into Divi and they set up virtual cards and they set up budgets uh, and, th- and they set up this this new process to go back to another way of doing it or an old way of doing it, they've got to like go get their Amex card again. They then have to like set up Expensify. Then they have to like bring everything you know together. And with Divi, it's like once you have budgets and you're operating out of a budget mindset, which can be a little hard up front, but on the back end. Like they're not leaving because it just has changed the way that they're they're running their finances. So, um, you know, and, and no one else is doing that yet. I know people are going to copy us. Uh, I won't name one competitor, but we tend to see a lot of copy from from someone out there. Um, but Alex, I know who's, who's who's the competitor. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> What's the first letter? <laughs> What's it rhyme with? <laughs> Let me put it this way. I'll, I'll be honest. This is my honest opinion. People probably kill me. I, I don't know how many people are even listening to this. I have a lot of respect for what I see Brex do in the market. They bring a lot of their own innovation to the market and it's super, super impressive. And so, you know, they challenge us and we challenge them and and, and whatnot. Um, so Who's bigger? Uh, well, they just announced uh, a, a large valuation. So I think it, I, I would fair to say that they are. Do you think they're doing more revenue than you or they're just good at driving evaluation? Uh, I don't know their revenue for sure, but I'm fairly confident. I do know that I don't, I think the gaps are smaller than people think. Um, uh, I think they're very good at driving valuation, but they're bigger. I think that, you know, it is very fair to say, I, I can't speak to their numbers and stuff, yeah, but fair. Um, look, Brex, like my thing is like Brex drove innovation on the credit side and they deserve a lot of credit for it. Uh, we drove innovation on the software side and we deserve a lot of credit for it. Yep. Uh, and that, what my point is, you're going to see the market, whether it's whether it's the big companies like Chase, Wells Fargo, Amex, et cetera, or other uh, startups copying suit. Um, budget is one of those things that we've held to and, and we're super proud of. And it's super powerful for our customers. And I think you will see that be emulated in some form over over the next couple of years. Yep. Yep. Uh, your friends at Qualtrics had this in the public markets in the SaaS world, anything above like 130, 140% net dollar retention is world class. It's hard to drive expansion revenue in the SMB cohort. What does your expansion look like over the last 12 months on, on the historical cohort? Yeah. So again, not going to disclose specific numbers. Here's the thing though, with, with Divi, because it's like, Hey, someone will get it in and they'll start using us for the card software. But then they start using us for the AP management or then they start, you know, that at some point they're going to start using us for the loan management. So we actually feel like there's another five things we can add in that stack and five just being a, you know, kind of a figure. That's all mainly free though, right? Yeah, but everything we launch has some, something that adds to the wheel, right? Whether it's direct revenue, whether it's future software revenue, whether, and I'll, let me give you an example and I, I'm not going to give you a price point, but uh, AP management, right? So let's say it takes five days for your ACH check to get, into your vendor's hands. Well, hey, for a fee, for a premium fee, you can get it, we can get it to them in two days. Okay, cool. Right. And every single thing that we do has a flywheel effect. Okay, you want to suck in your invoices into the system? Well, every invoice is a new vendor that we can talk to and say, do you want to accept a virtual card? Yeah. Or do you still want to accept ACH? And there are ways for us to make money in that flywheel and get new customers. So even though something's free, I mean, like the obvious one is look at Facebook. It's free. Well, yeah, but clearly there's flywheels that are making a ton of money. And we have a very similar one just on the business side. Fair. Can, can we say your net revenue retention is above 120% or 110%? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I can't actually recall the number off the top of my okay. head. So that I'd have to go check. No problem. No problem. Last question that I want to dive into. So you're giving the software away free, but you find unique sort of almost like utility-based ways to pull some margin out. You just gave a good example on the AP management side of things. I mean, how much are, right now can you guys make on average per SMB using the platform? Is it like $10,000 sort of a year or a thousand a year or what? Uh, yeah. And again, like I'm just, I'd have to look at the number. It's it's thousands, right? It's really healthy, meaning we feel really, really good. Uh, the averages can change depending on, you know, is it the 150 to 50 to 500? Clearly, if someone's a 100% company spending $100,000, you know, there's 200 to 300 bips. So you can do the math, right? Like now, 
there's a lot that we have to account for though, right? What people don't forget is we are giving rewards back to our customers. Yeah, you don't make the full 300 bips, do you? I mean, imagine you're probably making like 70 bips or 100 bips max. Yeah, I mean, it comes to us, but there's there's costs, right? There's risk, you know, you have to you have to put money away for risk, you have to put money away for COG, you have to put money away for uh, paying it back to, to the customer and, re- and rebate. Uh, and so there's a lot of factors in there, but yes, there's still a very healthy business in which you can make a fair amount of money on a free product to an SMB. Yeah, it's okay. super attractive. Alex, last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up, a lot of founders, they don't understand the concept of secondaries, but I like it. It removes risk from the business, allows you to double down and go for a $10 billion sort of thing and build something bigger. How have you and your Blake thought about secondaries and even for your early employees? Have you guys done any, was any of the 165 million recent raise a secondary? Uh, yeah. And again, I don't want to speak to specifics because there's always a lot of people involved and, and whatnot. Um, but I, I will say, as a whole, I think the secondaries, I agree with you, secondaries uh, done right can give motivation, uh, which, which allows you know, early founders and early employees to, to keep going as opposed to you know, stop, right? Because it's, it's easy to say, oh, I've been grinding away for however many years and I just need something out of it. Like, fine, press, press the button. Yeah. Um, but you know, secondaries, I think, are really, really healthy if, if done correctly, which is, by the way, uh, I, I don't know if everyone would agree with that statement, um, in, in Silicon Valley. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear other people's opinions, but I, I do think it's healthy. All right. Let's wrap up here with the famous five rapid fire. Number one, favorite business book. Uh, actually, you know what? It's not my favorite of all time, but the John Iger book, I found at least very entertaining the one he uh, wrote last year. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, I've been, I'm like late to the party cause I'm not on Twitter, but I've been following Naval more. Yeah. And I know like, I, I found a lot of what he says to be pretty interesting. So sure. We'll go with him. Number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool for building Divi? S- sorry. Say that again. Favorite online tool that you used to build the company. So like favorite tool that we're using internally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or personally. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get both. So I, I, I don't know how I would live without Slack. So Slack is clearly up there. Everyone's heard of it. But you know what? I got to give a shout out to is OneNote. OneNote, Very like good. Evernote's super sexy. It's the Silicon Valley. But I'll I, look. At OneNote is a vastly superior product to Evernote, and and what you can do with it. So I'll go with OneNote. Number four, Alex. How many? You have a, I think you said you had a three month or three year old. How many hours of sleep you get in these days? I have four kids. Uh, oh, under, under the age of 10. So oh. the, if it was just one three-year-old, I wouldn't be stressed. That would be quite easy, actually. But uh, I have two girls and two boys, but I also have an amazing wife who helps obviously do a ton. So I'm getting adequate sleep. But yes, it's, you know, my, my 10-year-old was up till midnight last night and I'm having to lie in bed with her and talk her through the whole thing. So there are some, you know, some nights where it's longer than others. Now it's how old are you? 36. Last question. Take us back 16 years. What do you wish you knew when you were 20? Um, you've heard it, but I will, I, I just, I, I believe so strongly your twenties are meant to learn. Don't focus on the salary. Obviously salary is a matter of respect. Salary is what you're going to, what you valued at. I totally get that, but don't take jobs for the salary. Like take jobs that you're going to learn what you need to learn to take the leaps and jumps that you want to ultimately do and make your money. And that might happen in your late twenties or in your thirties or forties. But please, if when you're 20, find the right people in the right companies, work with them and you will learn so much that the rest will be taken care of. Money will come. Guys, there you have it. Alex from Get Divi. They launched back in 2017, financed with their own personal capital, did a first formal round of about 10 million bucks, crossed 1,000 customers, SMBs mainly in 2019, now over 10,000 customers with a clear path to break 100 million bucks in AR over the next two years. Most of their business, it's giveaway free software where they have multi billion dollar competitors in the AP management space, expense space, really to make all their money on those 300 bips on the credit volume they process currently between a billion and 100 billion. Nice big range there. Alex, thanks for taking us to the top. Anytime. Thank you. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.